Hey guys, thanks for watching. This is Trenton at American Dream Vacations. Uh, I'm going to give you some information about your RV and its propane system and, and the appliances that are supplied by the propane. Um, first thing you're going to want to do is check the connections at the propane bottles if it's a trailer. Uh, motorhomes, there's not much to check on, on that. Uh, make sure they're tight, hand tight sufficient. Um, Secondly, you're going to want to make sure that your bottle or bottles are open, okay? Personally, I like to just leave the bottle on that you'll, you'll be using, okay? And uh, left is open, right is closed. So you open the bottle. Um, if you have an indicator, uh, it should change from red to green. Green indicates that you've got propane flow. Red indicates that you have no propane flow or you're out of propane, okay? Uh, a lot of the trailers at the propane regulator have a switchover. Um, it's currently set to this bottle, it's pointing to this bottle. Uh, if you run out of propane, you're going to want to go ahead and close the bottle off uh, that's empty. Switch this to the bottle that you'll now be using and reopen the bottle. Okay. When you first open the bottles, uh, or if you switch bottles and open that bottle, you're going to need to get the propane flowing through the system again uh, or bleed the lines to, to get the air out of the lines. So I'm going to show you how to do that inside the trailer. The easiest place to bleed the lines is at the stove. Um, some stoves have an igniter built in, uh, and some require that you have a lighter, okay? Uh, what you're going to want to do is to turn one uh, or two of the burners in the on position uh, and, and attempt to light it. Be careful when doing this not to burn yourself. Um, once you've got a burner or two lit, uh, let it continue burning for about 10 seconds. Uh, make sure that it gets those air bubbles out of the lines, okay? Uh, once you're confident that you're, you've got propane flowing and you know that you've got propane, you can go ahead and turn that burner into the off position. Okay. Um, I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you how to light the oven on this. Um, almost all of the ovens are manually lit, okay, so you will need some kind of lighter. Barbecue lighters work very well because the pilots are usually uh, placed further back inside the oven. Okay. Um, on the stove front there, there's usually a knob specific to the oven and there's usually a setting that's uh, pilot, pilot on or, or just the pilot position. All right. Uh, turn it to the pilot position and you usually have to press the knob in the in position or depress it. Uh, it's got a little spring loaded action there. So while pressing that you're going to go ahead and hold your fire or uh, lighter to the pilot, which again is usually at the bottom of the oven in the very back. Okay, um, It's usually a little tube uh, with something sticking out above it, uh, or in this case it looks kind of like a funnel. But uh, I'm going to hold the flame directly to the pilot while depressing the oven knob, and um, I'm going to give it about 15 to 30 seconds for the pilot to light and I'm continuing to hold the flame directly to that pilot. Okay. Once you're confident the pilot's lit, continue holding the knob in the in position or continue to pressing it. What you're doing is you're allowing the pilot to heat up the thermocouple. The thermocoupler was going to open up the main line, the main gas line, once it's nice and hot. Okay. Uh, I think this is enough time, so I'm going to go ahead and adjust the temperature on the oven, and you should see this main tube fire up on both sides of the both sides of it okay if it fails to, to light uh, you didn't leave the pilot lit for long enough so you need to start over uh, turn it back to the pilot position hold the flame to the pilot and adjust the temperature and as you can see uh, the tubes uh, nice and hot <laughs> um, it is suggested that in between use you're going to turn the oven all the way off. Do not leave the pilot lit. Uh, that's for safety, safety reasons, okay? Um, one other system in the, in the vehicle that's supplied by the propane is the water heater. Uh, in most cases you'll turn this on when you get to the RV park. 
leave it on for the few days you're at one location uh, and turn it off before relocating okay um, a lot of times you'll see a light near the on and off switch for the water heater this is a fault light okay I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on the fault light comes on that indicates that the water heater is lighting uh, as soon as the water heater is lit the red light will go out and needs to stay out okay anytime the red light comes back on it's attempting to relight itself uh, the pilot may have blown out something along those lines um, it is possible that uh, you would need to cycle this on and off if it's having trouble lighting there could be air in the lines uh, leading to the water heater okay um, it'll attempt to light itself two or three times before the light remains on in which case you'll need to turn it off and back on okay uh, once the light stays out it should take only about 15 to 20 minutes for you to have a tank of water and once that water that hot water has been depleted um, it'll automatically reheat a, a tank of hot water okay and during that time you should not see the light come back on okay so once it's time to relocate you can turn that back off another important system in the vehicle that runs off of propane is the refrigerator uh, it's it's a neat neat idea it runs on propane so that you can leave the refrigerator on without electricity uh, being supplied to the trailer if uh, or motorhome if you're in a trailer you can run the refrigerator on propane while you're traveling um, and if you're in a motorhome, you can have the refrigerator on without the generator running, okay? Uh, please note that it does not run solely off of propane. It does run off of propane in conjunction with 12-volt power. Um, and it is one of the most 12-volt sensitive appliances in the vehicle. So if you were to uh, slowly lose 12-volt power or drain the battery, uh, while you may have sufficient propane, this will uh, no longer continue to operate. So. Uh, just a side note, you will need a, a way to maintain a 12-volt charge or at least be able to recharge the 12-volt, okay? Um, <clears throat> while your, your settings or buttons may look different than this one, they many times will offer uh, similar functions. Uh, first thing you need to do is turn the refrigerator in on position. Uh, usually there is an automatic setting, an auto setting, or a direct gas setting, okay? Uh, I like to use the automatic setting so that the refrigerator will automatically switch between propane or electricity, okay? Um, it is said that the refrigerators cool quicker on the propane setting, so if you're turning it on for the first time and you know very well that you'll have a way to keep your 12-volt battery charged, you can turn this to the gas setting directly. And you, you, I'm going to do that now, and I'm going to turn it off of auto and put it on the gas setting. Uh, it'll light itself and begin using the propane to cool down, okay? Um, most of the refrigerators will have some kind of check light or fault light similar to the water heater fault light, okay? You, in most cases, shouldn't see that come on uh, unless you have a problem, all right? That problem may be you're out of propane or you've lost 12 volt power, okay? So if that's occurred, you'll need to go back through the steps that we've already discussed check your propane, make sure it's on, make sure you've got a flow of propane to the stove, okay? Uh, another system in the vehicle that uses propane is your heater. Uh, let it be known that the heater will deplete your propane quicker than any system in the vehicle. Uh, it consumes quite a bit of propane. So usually you, you'll find the, the heater controls at a wall-mounted thermostat, uh, either in conjunction with your AC uh, settings and thermostat or on a separate thermostat. This particular one is combined with the AC thermostat. Uh, what you'll want to do is turn this to the furnace position under the system, leave the fan in the auto position so that it will cycle on and off once it reaches the desired temperature and then of course you have the thermostat setting to uh, change that temperature. Okay, um, I appreciate you all watching this video and I have one last tip for you. Uh, the pr propane is uh, can be a dangerous thing. Uh, you want to avoid leaks at all costs, so you want to you know be careful when using these systems. Uh, all the vehicles will be equipped with a propane detector that detects leaks uh, in the propane system. They're usually located near the ground 
uh, either in the kitchen or around the dining area, and they come in all different shapes, sizes, and colors. Um, and they're usually a very simple looking uh, sensor. <clears throat> you'll find one button on there, which is usually a test and or mute button, and you'll find a light, which uh, can change colors. Okay, most of them have some type of legend on there that'll indicate what is exactly happening if it's picking up uh, a gas smell, uh, if you're losing 12 volt power, uh, or something along those lines. Okay, uh, if this sounds, the first thing you need to do is to determine what you're doing that could have set it off. These are ultra sensitive to chemicals, potpourris, aerosols, uh, cooking things like bacon. Um, so if, if that's an issue, feel free to mute it uh, and open some windows to properly ventilate. Uh, if you're concerned that it's a propane leak, uh, literally get down and smell the floor. The gas does sink to the floor. It's heavier than the air. Uh, from there, you're going to check the stove, make sure that the knobs are in the off position, and if you're still concerned, turn your bottles off and call us immediately. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been helpful. And again, this is Trenton from American Dream Vacations. Look out for the future videos. Thank you all.